Look down. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And it's a great honour to take part in this debate, and I'm pleased to follow the Honourable Member for uh, Plymouth Sutton and Devonport and uh, to, to welcome his support for the work of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission and the, the remarks that he made. And I'd also like to thank my right honourable friend, the Secretary of State, uh, the Chairman of the Commission, to congratulate him on wearing the uh, newly designed uh, corporate tie. Um, and particularly to thank him, the Leader of the House and the Chief Whip, for making time, government time, for this debate in the Chamber today, uh, which is on such an important topic. I'm also deeply honoured to be one of the two serving parliamentary commissioners of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission, uh, and I look forward to the comments from my other commissioner, the member for um, uh, Carl and Kingston North, I, I hope, shortly. Um, Having parliamentary representation on the Commission marks a tradition going back to the origins uh, of the Commission over 100 years ago. And our debate today is in the midst of Wargraves Week, has been said, but it's also a timely reflection of the events in June when we commemorate the liberation of Europe with the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. Many of our constituents, and indeed many in this House, will have had forebears, including parents, who served during World War II. Last autumn, I visited Salerno in Italy, where Commonwealth and American forces landed to form a beachhead on the European mainland in late 1943, where over 1,800 servicemen are commemorated. It was a particularly poignant trip for me, since my grandfather won his military cross there with the commandos, and my father-in-law wrote an account of the landing for the liberation of Italy. But reverting to the Normandy landings, my wife's cousin led the Social Services Brigade, which took the Pegasus Bridge, accompanied by his brigade, Piper. More locally, one of my predecessors as MP for Ludlow, Lieutenant Colonel Uvedale Corbett, won the Distinguished Service Order for his actions during the Normandy landings and breakout. All of us will have connections to those who served during the Second World War. And so the work of the Commonwealth War Graves Commission should be important to us all. The Commission cares for some 23,000 war memorials and cemeteries across 153 countries and territories around the globe, helping us all to honour and commemorate the 1.7 million Commonwealth service men and women who lost their life through war. There are few experiences more moving or evocative than visiting any of our battlefield cemeteries and seeing the ranks of the iconic headstones which mark the graves of the fallen, so magnificently maintained by the dedicated Commission staff. But in reality, the work of the Commission spans much more than even this. Uh, with a wide range of its historic preservation of world-class monuments and million of headstones, it has also world-class expertise in horticulture, and the research and record management that goes into sustaining our database of millions of casualties. Another of its most moving and impressive roles is in the continuing recovery and forensic identification and respectful reburial of remains of the fallen, where possible with military honours, which still goes on month in, month out. This week, during Wargraves Week, we can all take time, and I urge colleagues across the House to do so, to visit sites in each of our constituencies, to encourage our constituents with pleasure. For, to be forgiven me. Yesterday I visited uh, Llandingat Cemetery, the church in Llandovery, and there were several uh, Commonwealth graves there, and I worked with uh, Ryan Jones as a volunteer with the Commission. Will he, in his remarks, pay tribute to the volunteers for their work in places like Commanders who are looking after these graves? I'm delighted to, and he preempts one of the comments that I'm going to make. Uh, he's absolutely right. The volunteering um, element to, to preserving uh, the quality of the headstones is a relatively recent phenomenon, uh, and, and I'm sure we'll touch on that in a few moments. But there is plenty of scope to add more, and indeed, many members of the House might want to consider volunteering to maintain uh, gravestones within their own constituencies. In, uh, in, in South Shropshire, more than 200 casualties from World War I and World War II are buried at 74 locations across uh, the Ludlow constituency, with over 30 commemorated at Bridge North Cemetery, the largest site uh, in the constituency. And I 
like the Honourable Member, paid my respects at one of these sites last Saturday in the deconsecrated churchyard of St Leonard's in Ludlow, where volunteers do indeed help keep the wall graves in as reasonable order as possible in a, uh, a churchyard which is no longer active. So, Wargraves Week, inaugurated only in 2021, stands as a good opportunity to highlight all of the work that the Commonwealth Wargraves Commission does around the world, none of which would be possible without both our generous member nation funders and, of course, our amazing staff and volunteers. With my wider interest in the environment, I'd like to touch briefly on the work of the Commission from a sustainability and horticultural perspective. There can be few organisations in the world with responsibility for sustaining the environment for such a diverse global footprint, managing sites in all climates, at various elevations, and with one of the widest range of flora and fauna managed by any single organisation. Horticulturalists working for the Commission care for many native plant species in our sites across the world. And while this does mean that the Commission is a curator with exceptional knowledge about these plants, we are also very much challenged by global climate change. The Commission itself has committed to achieve net zero by 2050 and is utilising new approaches to horticulture and memorial maintenance to reflect changing climate, while reducing the use of pesticides and herbicides as well as fossil fuels. I would also like to place on record my thanks as a member of the Commission's Audit Committee to my right honourable friend, the Defence Secretary. As he's mentioned in his opening speech, as Chairman um, of the Commission, he showed real leadership in securing a three-year funding settlement earlier this year from donor nations led by the Ministry of Defence, and we're extremely grateful to him for that, not least that this provides certainty of funding to continue the fine work of the Commission through the inevitable uncertainty of a general election and potential spending review. Of course, our work is not immune from the impact of war today. Sadly, many of the places in which the Commonwealth War Graves Commission look after war memorials and cemeteries suffer from the instability and repercussions of conflict. Our sites in Gaza have been no exception, and I join the Secretary of State in paying tribute to the work of many people, both here in the UK and in our High Commissions in the region, for helping to ensure the safe evacuation of our staff and their families. Unfortunately, our restoration work on site will have to wait while access remains impossible due to the war. We face similar challenges, securing safe access to our cemeteries in some other places, including currently Iraq, Iran, Yemen and Sudan. But our commitment to these sites is undiminished, and I know we will return to carry out our important work as soon as conditions allow. In three weeks' time, we will be marking the 80th anniversary of the D-Day landings. This is an important opportunity to remember the contribution of UK and Commonwealth soldiers in the liberation of Europe from the Nazis, and to encourage the next generation to take up responsibility for remembrance. Since this may well be the last significant milestone commemoration of the D-Day landings attended by veterans of the campaign, it is a particularly poignant commemoration, but it also highlights just how important it is that younger generations take up the mantle of remembrance. The Commission has therefore placed a great emphasis on involving schoolchildren in the major programme of events in both the UK and France on the 5th and 6th of June, involving veterans, serving personnel and children. Normandy will, of course, be the centre point of the commemorations, where the com Commission maintains 116 cemeteries and memorials, which mark the graves of 25,000 fallen service personnel. Recognising the need to maintain our relevance to future generations, the Commission has spent much of the last year looking further ahead, as, the, as, as both of the opening speeches uh, referenced, in developing the Commission's strategy towards 2039. This sets a clear path to the 100th anniversary of World War II, increasing our collaboration with parallel organisations in other countries, both to foster reconciliation between former adversaries and inform younger generations about the human cost of war. This is all the more poignant and relevant given the first state-on-state -state war at scale going on in Europe right now since 1945. 
As we move away beyond lifetime memory of the world wars, the environment in which the Commission does our work is changing. Younger generations are not as directly or personally connected as older generations to World War I and World War II. While this clearly presents a challenge, it is also the true test of our commitment to honour the fallen, one I hope that future generations will meet, just as previous generations have. In closing, Mr Deputy Speaker, I'd just like to thank all members here today for their support of Wargraves Week and the important work the Commonwealth War Graves Commission undertakes around the world. The serried ranks of gravestones, so well maintained by the Commission, leave a clear impression on all who see them of the sacrifice of the fallen around the world to serve as a reminder to all of us of the immense human cost of war and that the legacy of those who gave their lives depends on facing down the resurgent threats we face to global stability today. Yeah. Yeah. Alan Dorans.